All right, so um, we are going to draw this flower today. I'm going to show you a little bit about measuring. We're going to be working with a pencil and paper, but I would really like to shift you guys over to a new medium, which means a new surface, a new paper, and a new drawing implement. Um, so just to kind of review the, oh, shoot, sorry, I automatic, ah. Well, anyway, we don't need we we don't really need that right now. We're all uh, log in. So I want to move you to charcoal. Anybody know what charcoal is? What's charcoal in drawing terms? What is charcoal? Just an implement for drawing. For uh, I see it sort of for um more about shading or something like the next dimension up from a pencil. Yeah, it's uh, anybody know what it's made of? Wood, right? Yeah, it's burnt wood. So and you'll it's really see, messy. Yeah, it's really interesting. So you'll see uh, what we will be using is not a charcoal pencil. It is not something called compressed charcoal. I will demonstrate what those things are. It's literally something you might see called, uh, here, I'll pop this up so you can take a look at it. It's literally called, um, it might be called vine charcoal, which is actually burnt grapevine. It might be called willow charcoal, which is okay. made out of willow branches that are burnt. Um, it uh, there, you know, you can also you you can use any kind of wood. One of my favorite sets. I'm going to say, one of my favorite sets is um, a, 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 an American company here called Bob's Fine Vine Charcoal. Uh, Bob goes out and collects like uh, wood from trees that have burned in California forests and packages it up so that you can draw with it. I have actually had a student who works on a farm um, just go out to the wood pile that's, that's always burning and take a piece off and use it. So it is burnt wood, which means it has a very um, specific kind of feeling. It's quite light. It could be, it could be kind of square like this or rounded, more rounded. Oh yeah. Like that. Um, it's super messy. You can see already. I've just totally gotten it kind of comes off in your hands, but it does these really cool things. Mm. Right? It, it covers in this really dark way. And the really cool thing about it is I can make a line and then rub it out. This is not something you can do with pencil, not in the same way, right? Even if we erase it, you can still see that dang line. It's always there. So what I love about charcoal, uh, what I love about working with charcoal is that I can draw with an eraser. I can draw with the edge. And it's very soft and beautiful. If I don't like something, I can kind of rub it out. So that's it, it is a it is a fantastically freeing medium. Now, there are some things that look like charcoal, but are not going to be helpful to us. One is called compressed charcoal. I have that in my in this hand here. You can see they look similar, but it will feel heavier and compressed. So basically, charcoal is just the burnt wood. Compressed charcoal is burnt wood mixed with a substance that makes it dark and heavier. You can always tell compressed charcoal because I can't get rid of it. Mm. See that? So we tend, so I don't want you to use this. You can always get it. I want you to use something soft and mutable like this. Pencils also really don't work. And you'll see that I'm working on something called newsprint, which is kind of a brownish, it's literally the, it's the paper that used to be, that newspapers are printed on. So, right, so it's kind of, we all know that feeling. We know what that, I mean, I know it's been a long time probably since anybody's picked one up, but you know, you know what it is. So newsprint has a very soft, it really takes this material quite well. And then this, let's see, there's one that's, I've got one that's, hang on, oh yes. 
And then the third thing I'd like you to get is something called a kneaded eraser. It looks a little like silly putty. You can stretch it, split it. Oh, that reminds oh. me of my mom had tons of those. Right? It's fantastic for erasing. It's fantastic oh, for working. And what I'm going to show you is how to draw with your eraser. What did you call the eraser? It's a kneaded eraser. And, oh, yes, kneaded. Yeah. Like kneading bread. Needed rubber. So I'm, I'm going to send this over to you guys. I would like you to try and get these materials. And uh, let me know if you're having trouble getting the materials. Okay. If you can't get them, talk to me and we'll try to problem solve how to get them to you. But I'd like you to try and get them because I'd like to teach you how to draw with them. They're pretty amazing. So everybody up for that in the future? Yeah. All right. All right, but in the meantime, we're gonna go back to plain old pencil. And we are gonna draw this calla lily. And we are, I'm gonna show you a kind of drawing trick that really helps kind of make things proportionally correct. So we're gonna try not to work from uh, our grid today. We're gonna to actually, I'm gonna actually try and show you how to measure this to make it, and then you can kind of make it any size you want to. So what we do, have you ever seen anybody here, Hannah, huh? I'm gonna pop up. Anybody seen anybody going? You ever seen a drawer go like this? Wondered what the hell they're doing? Okay, they're actually measuring often with their thumb. I can kind of almost show you here. They're measuring the size of something, right? And normally we're not actually touching the thing that we're measuring. We're actually standing far back from it. So we're holding our arms straight. So if I wanna measure my head, here, I'm gonna stand. If I wanna measure my head, I would put, I would keep my pen straight I put the top of my pen at the top of my head and my thumb at my chin. Then say I wanted to figure out how many heads down I was. I could do that by keeping my arms straight and going down. So why don't you try it and tell me how many heads, how many heads my height is that you can see. Try holding out your pencil. Okay. On your your body? Yeah, on what that yeah. you can see on my body. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How many had just my vertical distance? How many heads am I vertically? Only two. That's so weird. <laughs> two, right? Mm. Yeah, right. So if I were to come, if you if I was to ask you to draw me. I can have you come over here, right? And you could I uh, you could just draw any line. Actually, let's do this on the, the news part. You could you could decide the vertical distance of me. Any distance. It could be like this. It could be like this right and then to figure out where to put my head and how big to make my head you just have to find the halfway point right yep. two heads then my head must be here does that make sense yep. everything else is here you can figure out other things from this too once you've determined and it doesn't matter whether it's this size or this size because this is a proportional measurement, right? So as long as you get this measurement right, then you know that it doesn't matter whether you're big or small, it's still gonna be the same. Does that make sense? Yep. Mind yeah. right blown, right? Like so far, you can use this measurement to check other things. You can use this measurement to check how wide I am, right? 
you can use this because I've already established this is a measurement. If I'm still, if you could still see me, there. like this, once you've determined my, you know, head distance, you can then use the head, flip it this way and figure out how far my shoulder sticks out on this side. That's what is happening when somebody's doing this, when you watch somebody doing this. It is math. But it's not really math. It's more visual spatial. It's like you and you have to be very careful because you want to make sure you use them. Sometimes we sketch things out and we guess how big things are, right? Or small things are. And then we measure things based off of like this. So you can't really draw this until you know the height, until you know the height of everything. So today, we're going to do this. And let me know if you have questions as we're doing this. So today, I'm going to show you the height of this flower. It's about the same. See how I'm measuring it here with my pencil, my pen. as the width of the flower. Do you see that? All right. Here, that actually height is like one pen width. And then over here, this is the pen width is basically here, right? At almost the widest point, the width of the flower is a little bit at its base here, wider than the pen and a little bit narrower here. So, everybody following me so far? Mm -hmm. so when we wanna to start to sketch, I'm gonna have you start by sketching. Uh, I think I want you to do this first. This shape, right? This yellow shape, this envelope. I'm not gonna have you go in because I want you to see the relationship of this to this. The first thing I'm gonna do with my pencil, which I can erase, right? Is kind of decide, okay, here's my stem. And here is, here's where the top of my flower is. You can make your flower shorter if you want to. But once I do that, and here, let me make it really clear. Yeah. Here. I'm going to mark this a little bit out here, the right of here. And then I know that this is as wide as this pencil. Got it? Isn't this a trip? <laughs> <laughs> it's like such a trip. It's going to trip you out every single dang time. So now I, now I can start to skip. Let's see, I'll start here actually. I can start to sketch my envelope. This is when a long pencil is useful. Yeah, because I have my- I'm using this little one. <laughs> well, you can stand, but right? And I'll send you a picture of this. Would it be helpful to, let me sketch it and then I'll send you out a picture. Right. Probably about like that. Although if I really want to check it, I can come over here and check it. I can see here. Yeah, maybe it comes out a little farther. 
So this is a little bit further out than the flower goes here, but you see my point, right? This is about the width where this comes. I mean, if you wanted to, you could, well, anyway, I don't want to confuse it. So let me take a picture of this so you can see it up close. Give me just a second. I'll send this across the WhatsApp thread so you have this. And then I want you guys to try and sketch this. Doesn't matter what size it is, what it matters are the proportions. And here's what mine looks like. I think that's right. All right, now let me get back in here so you can see what's up here. So I just made it a little bit harder. I'm not meaning to make it too hard, but if we're going to carry on this thinking that we're learning, I think the grid helps you learn that things aren't the size that you think they are. And then after that, I'm starting to teach you the idea of proportional measurement. I'm not doing a one to one. I don't, these aren't actually the same size. See this, this is bigger. I'm making this bigger. It doesn't have to be the same size, but the proportions have to be the same. So that is the thing. It's actually quite simple, but it like is, it's mind bending for people. Right, because it's not how you're, no one's trained. This is pure visual spatial thinking. It's also the most logical thing I'll ever, you'll ever learn in your life. Very logical once you, once you understand it. So when you think you've got it, send it across, send me your envelope and I'm gonna check the measurements. I'm going to check this. So I can check this, this, like maybe this length from here to here by comparing it to here. Yes. So I'm going to check it here, here. Oh, yeah. This needs, well, the other thing I can do here, which will be helpful, I think, is to find a halfway point for here. So I'm literally, I'm just gonna check. Yep, this is about half the distance. I'm doing that right. If I were to draw this straight across, here is where halfway up this flower, if I were to draw a vertical line across, that would be useful. So the other thing I'm gonna do is find my halfway point here. Yep. And then I'm gonna draw my line across to make sure I have this part of the flower on the top and this part on the bottom. All right, and let me see. Hold on. And yeah, somebody said there's a cross. Uh, give me just a second. I got to grab my WhatsApp screen. Yeah, I always like start with the grid and then people are like, what? <laughs> okay, let's see, Makiko. One. Okay, good, Makiko. You may have to bring this down a little bit on this side. Find your halfway point here and draw a line straight across. But mm -hmm. that's good. Otherwise, that looks good. Um, yeah. Holly, let's see. One. Polly, does this look? Oh, I see. It's uh, It's sideways. One. Good job, everybody. Excellent. 
You got it. And hang on, Dominique. I'm going to look at yours. Dominique's rushed ahead. Let's see how she did. You may have one. Okay. Not bad. Um, so what I would do, Dominique, is make sure that you find the halfway point here, right, before you start to sketch in these shapes. Right, to make sure you have your stem in the right place and your stem will be kind of just below this halfway point. So the thing I think that really people find confusing is that everything is in relation to everything else. So it's kind of tiring. At the beginning of class, it's a little bit exhausting because you're constantly checking if my stem starts down here, what does this light, you know, what's over here directly across, right? Um, and in fact, if I were to split this half in half, I would see that basically, uh, a little bit below, one, two, right? So if I divide this half in half, I would see that my stem kind of starts right there. So I'm going to divide this, I'm measuring, I'm like kind of consistently measuring so that I know where to put these negative spaces, right? And I also know that this flower comes up here. Yeah. I don't think this is going to be hard for you guys. I can see it already. And then up here. So you notice I'm kind of working. I'm I'm not really. I'm I'm really working the negative spaces. But I see you're already kind of getting that. Once I get these, it becomes easier, right, to add these shapes, these inner shapes in. Let me add these in black because I think you can see them better. And then it's really, I'm starting to sketch out the light, the medium, and the dark shapes. Doesn't that just seem, it's funny, it probably seems a little extreme to people. People are like, why do we have to work that? You know, can't I just guess? But we've already observed that when we guess, we make things too big and too small. I can see that this line connects up here and that it also connects over here. So wild. And I can see that there is this And then, of course, what has happened is I have so many um, lines, it's a little hard to see all the dark and light shapes. So once you get this outer shape in, I will flip it over. I've got another one that isn't all sketched up. And then we can look at that for our values. So. Don't rush this. 
So many people find this kind of tedious. I find it incredibly comforting because I know that if I do this, I'm not going to fuck up this drawing. Like I'm not going to fuck it up. Right. And I'm amazed at how many people will just march ahead and then, you know, get like proportions completely wrong and then be upset later that they didn't, you know, well, I'll have to do it over again. I'm like, if you had just taken two minutes, right, to measure that, what's that saying? Measure twice, cut once. Carpenters know this. Builders know this. If you just taken two minutes to figure out like what you're sketching, Good job, you guys. When you think you've got the outer shape, okay, I see somebody sent something over. Let's take a look. All right, excellent. When we've got the shapes right. Oops, sorry. Uh, I think it kicks off after a couple minutes. I have to turn it back on. There we go. Sorry. You still might have to make minor adjustments, but it won't be completely out of whack. Right? Maybe you have to bring this down a little bit more. Maybe you have to bring this over. I don't know. There's little things that one might have to do. Not so much. And so when you think you've got this shape, send it over. Uh, then we'll start, then I'll move this and we'll start shading. But I want to check your shapes and make sure this is all feeling, it's feeling good. It should feel pretty good. In fact, I'm noticing you're going fast enough. I might print out another one. Uh, I have another calla lily. Maybe I'll have you do another one while we're working on this. But I get feedback before to, before I go way too wrong. I want you to give me your shape before you start shading, please. Send it over. Let me check. Did you send it over? Yeah, it's gone. That's good. Okay. Okay. Um, Pauline, so I'm having tr trouble. Give me a second. It's gonna take me a second to call it up. And I would like to, my biggest issue is that it's on the side. Oh, I don't know why, because it's like I'm taking it flat. I know. Let me just look at it, see if I can see it. All right. So okay, so Pauline, the first thing is that this needs to come down a little bit lower, right? This is the half, this is the halfway point across the flower. You've got this yeah. little dip, and then this comes down further. You don't have it coming down far enough. Um, looking at that. Uh, and then don't forget your shape of your petal up here. And don't forget this little shape here, which is also shaping the outside shape of the flower. Otherwise, it looks pretty good. Um, is, is, see where the, the center of the flower is? Where they... This? Yeah. It, uh, to me, mine is wrong there that that le part of the leaf or the bud seems it's too wide. Bit, it could be, it, yours could be a little wider. And what about the leaf under it? Is that, or the petal? Yes. Is that not a bit, it looks too wide at the brim? I'm looking. That doesn't look that bad to me. Okay. I'm happy for your, yeah. Don't believe it or not, this needs to be bigger. 
you want to look at how it connects. I was to keep drawing this straight down. So see how much, so you can maybe start here at this side and this side. It goes straight up. Probably needs to be twice the size that you made it. Yeah. Maybe. No, everything looks pretty good. You can, this is a little bit, actually here needs to be a little thinner. Yes. That, that, this part? Yeah. That's yeah, this is thinner. Sorry, I thought you were talking about this section. That section should be thinner, about half this, about half the, and then you'll have more room for this, the size. Good job. We got it. All right, is anybody else ready to send it over? Is uh, anybody finding this? What? How are you finding this? Is it challenging or is it actually, how is it for you? Um, how many? I got my proportions all wrong. I think I'm doing it again. Did you make it too big? Um, yeah, I made it too wide. Yeah, it's very easy to do that. So don't worry. It's, yeah. And this is why you catch it. If you catch it now, it's easy to fix, right? <coughs> easy to fix. There, here, and here. Uh, or here, here's, you know, this is an easier way to do it. You draw your line. You can draw your line like this find your halfway point and then really the halfway point it's the hat at the halfway point where things are the same where it's the same right do you get that but um dominique the halfway this is this this length of this flower is the same as the height of the flower but this line is here it's not exactly at the edge it's a little so, bit to the left that's I why you're I, struggling i i had it like that and then i moved the stem up higher because i moved the halfway line anyway whatever i'm fixing it um <laughs> got it got it all right cool all right let's see makiko let's see i'm gonna look at yours okay all right it takes a minute for it to come up all right so one two okay makiko there's something wrong with your me measurements your halfway point mm -hmm. it's not a halfway point so here Wait. Ah, it's your quarter point is the problem. All right, so hang on. I'm going to check this first. All right, so your width and your height are pretty good. Notice this, you did the same thing, Pauline. Did you make this too small and you make it too high up? It needs to come down more. Right? It's about twice the size that you drew it. Mm -hmm. And also, this is not, if you check your measurements, put your stem up too high. Okay. And then this is too narrow. This is not, you put your, you put your quarter point here. That's not where it is. The halfway point is, it's not quite the halfway point. If you measure it, you'll see. So you need to bring your stem down and you need to widen it. Mm -hmm. Maybe perhaps not as wide as I did, but definitely wider than what you did. Okay. So it's really easy. Like notice there's a big difference between a, a millimeter or two. There's a big old difference. It's funny, this looks like not a big deal, right? Cause it's kind of off to the side. So we're not really thinking about it, but this shape really has to come down 
here. You have to be able to create this negative space with this shape. So everything is relative, everything else. You have to get used to kind of a constant assessment. If I have this here, where is this? Otherwise, good job. Good job, you guys. For the first time doing this, very good. And then once you've done it, right, you can start by darkening the darkest areas. That's down here. And maybe here, this is a little bit lighter. On this side. And then it's a little tricky to see everything else beyond here. So we'll go this far. This is slightly lighter, but still darker than what's around it. I mean, this is a white flower, right? It's kind of interesting. It's a white flower, but a lot of it is not white. <laughs> it's shaded. Ah. I think my phone is in general giving out on me. I think it's at that point. Let's see. All right, everybody's just turning up sideways. So I've got to look at them all sideways. One, two, good. One. Okay, Dominique, so you're, you're making the same, I'm watching you make the same mistake. Ah, hold on. Actually, I'm gonna let it be. Um, uh, you're, it, it's pretty good. Actually, you're in pretty good shape. So now start, so now I'm gonna move, you guys are in good shape. So let me move, let me give you the better. Good job, you guys. So let me give you the better picture where you can see the shading all the nuances of the shading more clearly. Would you like me to send this over as a picture? Oh, actually I have, you already have this picture. Black and white is in the WhatsApp thread. So if you're having a little trouble seeing what's happening here, I'll come down a little bit further, but also you can check out the WhatsApp thread. Notice that one of the things that's really gonna help this flower come out is that the darkest area is actually around the edge. The darkest for sure is around the edge of the flower. So one of the things that I can do to highlight the whiteness of the flower, the lightness of the flower is to add in a super dark background. Also that very nicely gets rid of my, my envelope lines. Notice I'm kind of, my pencil is, I'm holding my pencil close to the, Donnie, he might not be able to do this if your pencil is short. <laughs> but notice as I hold it, I'm kind of holding it and almost leaning my, leaning uh, uh, very close to the end and then letting my pencil kind of sweep, makes a kind of certain line. 
Not the only way to do it. In fact, it's making my arm ache. <laughs> So now, ladies and gentlemen, this is how we really draw. This is how it really is to draw. We're not messing around anymore. You are now, oh, there is a little white flower down here. Didn't really show up so much in our sketch. So if you want to put that in. Like here, but you don't have to, not required. Notice I need to make sure that although my stem is dark, it's not as dark as my background. Tape you down because hmm. oh my. Um, more tape. It just snowed here. Wow. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure the kids are loving it. There we go. It's 26 degrees Celsius here. Beautiful. I know. Day. I know. It's summer there. <laughs> we are that we're just like. Oh, wait here. Yeah. There are children in Australia who have never seen snow. Ah. So they probably really like it, but it's uh, over here, we're not very good with snow. It doesn't happen very often in Portland, so there, there's no preparation for it. So now there are just thick sheets of, so what's happened is it stopped snowing and then it got really cold. It started to melt in the in the morning, in the daytime, and then it gets really yeah, cold. Yeah, it goes slushy, yeah. It's like the streets are all sheets of ice. Uh, it's terrifying. <laughs> like, and there's no in a in a proper city where they properly take care of this. Where this happens a lot, they have snow plows that go through and like at least on the major roads. Yeah, plow them out, but that doesn't happen here. So we just have to wait till it melts. We're all kind of paralyzed. <laughs> Remember, um, chillblains too from snow. Oh yeah, kids would get chillblains from playing in it. Yeah. Chillblains, yes. Your ears, your fingertips, your toes. Yeah. Frostbite, we call that. It is. Um, yeah. Chillblains is a mild form of frostbite. frostbite yeah. right? Mm -hmm. See how I'm starting to get kind of the shading in. Like I said, if you're having trouble, and here's where you might start reshaping things. You might be, oh, this is a little bit not exactly. Mm -hmm. 
So anyway, I have this these three cats, these two indoor outdoor cats who are the two indoor cats are happy to go inside in the night. But I have one cat that's a stray, one I'm kind of adopting. He is used to being outside all night. But now I'm locking him in my studio at night. Because it's you know, it's really cold outside. I don't want him to like freeze. And mm. he's complaining about it. He's like so complaining. Well, right now he's just sitting and sleeping in his little basket. But at some point I will leave and he will start to cry. And I'm like, cats. <laughs> for your own good. <laughs> for your own good, you dumb dumb. <laughs> something's wrong i'm just going to send you through i can't really see the petal as well, clearly do you have the as... whatsapp thread yeah i'm going to do it now yeah take a look at the whatsapp thread that's the easiest way to take a look at it i've, I've sent it across so you can see there's this kind of little And this is a kind of a soft edge, right? It's a little bit ragging. I... Well, if you get through this fast enough, I'll give you another one. I'll show you the measurements for that. Too. Hold on, let's see. Should have another one. Tava lilies are really fun to draw because they're so, their shape is, they have a good structure, kind of an easy, simple structure. It's not like drawing a rose. Can I just show you mine because something isn't right? Um, uh, did you take a look at it or at the thing and you still can't tell? Yeah, I did take a look at the, your one. Yeah, send it over. Send it over. You mean the, what I've sent? There's a black and white that I've sent across the thread. So you can look at the picture close up. If you pull up, if you pull up on your on your yeah, phone. Yeah, I've got it. Okay, you're still having issues? Yeah. Okay, send it over. Something's wrong with the the top part of it. Send it over. Something's wrong with the top part of it. What's wrong with the top part of it? I don't know. It doesn't look as the way I see it on um on yours like to me the petal the whole the top the leaf the flower doesn't seem recognizable no um i think you just need to keep pushing your darks here okay look like a problem to me okay that's fine um i could do this to y'all Flip it upside down. We've done this before. Okay. So yeah. That's a good way to like problem solve, right? To look at it upside down. So look at it upside down and see if, there we go. Sometimes that helps. Yes. Yeah. Just to, uh, and, I, and it's because, you know, it's such a fascinating thing. It's because, uh oh yeah it's like slightly darker here you can see some things happening easier and so there's kind of little light lines so the about areas are shaded there's like kind of little lightnesses like here, outside edges. Boy, I really hate doing this with pencil. I can't wait to get you to um, charcoal 
so much better. It's so much better for expressing this stuff. Good, Pauline. This is a great way to go off on a trip. This is good. Uh, maybe you'll be ready to start sketching things on the off the edge of the ship. Yeah, as I'm on the edge going. <laughs> Saving yeah, yeah, myself. I know. <laughs> yeah, I'll be right. Before our class finishes, though, can you tell, like, share your recent trip with us, with everybody? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was in New Jersey for the last two weeks painting three commissions. Uh, three... I'd say two by three meter uh, paintings, three, three, two by three meters is up four by five feet. Uh, and uh, they were quite fun. So uh, I want to send over to you, but I don't know if I can. Uh, I'll have to send you them towards the end of class. I'll send them toward, toward you. So uh, did your clients see your work somewhere, Leah? And yeah, they they're actually my clients are actually old college friends of mine so one of them has been saying for a while she wanted a big painting and she reached out about um six months ago and said i want an eight by ten foot painting and then we kind of of my ferns and then we and then she said how much will that cost to ship and i said you know it's going to be massively expensive to ship why don't you just fly me Mm. <laughs> and then uh, and then I will paint it in your basement and uh, so I did that so they flew me so I got to spend time with an old college friend and then of course another college friend found out about it and she wanted one so um, so I just did them all at once and uh, so and it was great it was really great and they loved it you know they got to see the painting at every stage they were so excited that's fantastic it was adorable it was so adorable. It was really very gratifying. I can't, I have to say it was like a super, um, um, for me, it was really relaxing because I didn't have to do anything else. You know, they were, they, they flew me over, they put me up, they fed me. I didn't have to do any housework. I didn't, you know what I mean? I didn't have to, you know, I wasn't really teaching very much, taught a little bit, but not very much. I didn't have to work at Starbucks. You know, I didn't have to do anything else. It was so it was weird. Even though I was cranking out these these three paint, giant paintings, that felt like a vacation. That felt like a vacation compared to my regular life. <laughs> I was like, that is amazing. That is, isn't it? Yeah. So it's really great. I'll send them over to you in a little bit. I just don't want to uh, remove the phone. Makiko, yours is beautiful. Oh, thank you. So are you done, Makiko? Woohoo! Look at yours, Dominic. It's beautiful. Yeah. And has it helped to be working uh, upside down a little bit? It helps to like kind of troubleshoot. Oh, I can see. I can see that as much as there is shading here, the darkest, I still have to lighten this shading. So it looks light next to the dark. Here, I can see a little bit more. Isn't this fun, you guys? Isn't this awesome? This is really this is really the beginning for you, the true beginning of being able to draw anything. Ultimately, if you want to, of being able to paint everything too. So what I am going to do now, because I think I can do this. I'm going to send you the drawing supply list. Now, this has ink materials and it also has pencil. Uh, page two is the charcoal, uh, but I'll send it to you anyway. And you'll want to pay attention to charcoal. 
Let's see here. Okay. Oh, All right, let's see if I can. Okay. Oh, you guys, these are looking great. And look at how um, I am paste, I'm cutting and pasting in the supply list. Keep working the edges around the edge of your flowers. I mean, we've got another 20 minutes, so I can pop, pop up another one and we can try it again. We can just keep working these a little bit more. Or the other option is you can add a little bit of color to the drawing, maybe markers, maybe color pencils. You have the actual colored, um, the color version at the beginning, at the beginning of the thread for today's class too. I love it. Everybody's just working. This is good. Oops, sorry. All right. Well, since you're not looking at this anymore, hold on. I'm gonna quickly. I'll quickly. I'll send you over pictures. Ah, oh, look at my. Okay. One minute. Honestly, guys, these look terrific. And look at how different they look, even though they're proportionally the same. This is what's neat. This is where you start to see, how do you individually use this tool? How does this tool, how do I make this tool work for me? It's gonna be different for everyone and, and you don't even have to think about it. It's just kind of what you do, but you do have to do it so that you can understand what it is that you mm. want aesthetically, right? Like this is not something that you can do once and figure out, but you'll learn by using the tool over the time, how you work with it. Um, it's very, it's profound, you know, it's like actually quite, <laughs> quite a profound thing. All right. So here are, here is, Here they are. Where's that picture of me in front of Leah, I can't open that link. I tried to open the, your, your list. 
It doesn't work. Not for me, but the others try to. All right. All right. Here are the first two pieces. And I put myself in oh, there. Wow. How big they are. Look at you. Wow. Oh, fabulous. Those are big. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then here is the, the third one. I love the different light in the ferns. Yeah, they, um, the first one, here's the other one in its place. So everybody wanted. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was really fun. They must have been extremely happy. Oh, yeah, they were. They were really enjoy. I think they were quite enjoying it. Uh, now, let me look here. Great way of traveling around the country. <laughs> Get them to bring you. Yeah, right. Why? Interesting. Okay. Let me see if I can figure out how to get this over. Well, it was cheaper for them. You know, ultimately mm. it was cheaper for them to fly me than to fly the dumb painting. <laughs> it was like, it's so damn expensive to do a big painting. Uh, and if they did, it would cost, it would cost us a few hundred dollars. I would have rolled it up. And then they would have had to pay more hundreds yeah, of dollars yeah. to stretch it. So if I could just have the canvas meet me there and then paint it there, it was cheaper. It was, I think it was actually cheaper. They probably even use miles. So mm, like, doesn't matter. Yeah. You got it. It's a win-win. Yeah, it was so really fun. It was really quite fun. And it, it taught me some things. Um, I'm not sure why this is not... How, in the name of God, did you work out proportions or something like this? Um, I. That's an interesting question. Uh, that's a, okay. That's a good question, actually. Um, by the way, I'm assuming you guys are working off the phones, so you don't need to the WhatsApp thread, so you don't need to be to have this up anymore. I'll remove the spotlight. Uh, so I photograph ferns all the time so I have tons of ferns on my phone at any time and I will print out piece I will cut out areas that I like shapes that I like and uh, I will print them out and then uh, I use a tiny little I use a I identify where the center of the fern is print out and I identify where the center is on my painting and then I do try to follow the organic, like I do, I pick out the most obvious, there's usually 10 to 12 fern leaves and fronds that are big and they're kind of, mm. so I put those in and then I kind of sketch in the littler ones behind, but you don't have to do very much because usually those 12 big ones like take up most of the space. A lot um, of brush strokes. So. Yeah, 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 but not as many as you think. It's an illusion. <laughs> Good illusion. I love the night skies in the back of them. Thank you. Thank you. So the magenta one, uh, she was very specific. She wanted magenta in the sky. And then on the one on the right, there's kind of an orange that fades. Yeah. Um, are you guys still working, by the way? I don't want to like... You're still working. I'm going to jump off because we have a, a guest gotcha. over. And, so, and that's but, totally fine. This is a really good uh, a moment to stop and go, what did you learn today? <laughs> um, going without a grid. Yeah, besides everything, right? If you're, if you're going without a grid, what are you doing? Measuring. Yeah. So establishing the vertical distance, I'm going to have you do this over and over and over again, establishing the vertical distance and then using that to check everything else. Right. So you establish the vertical distance, you maybe even locate something in the vertical distance that help you figure out where things are. And then you use that to determine how wide things are. 
-hmm. right? Where things are in relation to like other things, right? So where does that little tongue of that flower on the left come down? You know, where is it in relation to the stem in relation to the, the petal next to it? It's you guys just got everything. And by the way, you did a fabulous job. Absolutely fabulous. Hold it up. Let's hold up our drawings. They're beautiful. Oh my, uh, Makika, we can't see yours. You've got a blurry background. Blurry, come back. Uh, you've got a blurry background. You've got to take it off. Right. I think you have to click on your. These are awesome. Pauline, that's fabulous, by the way. Yours looks great. Everybody's looks great. Everybody's looks great. There is no question what this is. There is no question. Oh, she started to add color in. Nice. Nice. So, so this is what we're going to start doing more of. And next week, I would love to do it with charcoal. So if you guys can get okay. charcoal, newsprint and needed eraser, I'll get this supply list over to you uh, in a way that you can read. Um, then uh, then we'll get going. And Pauline, we're so like, please we'll report. miss you. We Thank will you. really miss you. And send us some report. photos from the ship. Yeah. Please. I'll try. I won't know when Saturdays are. Yeah. Like every day will be the same. Just send, <laughs> just send over the thread whenever you're whenever you have internet access. Whatever you Sounds have good. access. Have a fabulous time. We'll thank miss you, folks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, ladies, I'll see you next week. Great work today. Good job. Oh, I can't. I can't join next week because I'm oh. going to be traveling as well. Oh, good for you. Where are you yeah. going? Uh, well, in Japan, but somewhere off Tokyo, yeah. Oh, beautiful. Oh, lovely. Yay. Mm. All right. Well, but Dominic, maybe it'll just be you and me. We'll see how it goes. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.